when you first told me a few days ago that uh, I'm taking baby steps, I didn't say anything back. I just thought, baby steps, what are you talking about? This is huge. And then I thought, now, if I was a baby and I was taking my first step, what would I be thinking? This is huge. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to my next video. This is a little different, as you can see right away. This isn't the normal way we shoot videos. I am here with my new friend, Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Bob. And uh, Tommy is doing uh, something unusual, and so I wanted to share it all with you. So, Tommy, you're not on the road yet, but you hope to be. Is that right? That's right. And I was feeling frustrated about not being able to come up a, with a way to do it. And then I saw your video where you say, if you can't get on your road right away, at least start living that way in your home. I thought that's a great idea. So you've managed to find a way to practice being on the road right there in your home where and, you are. And how are you doing it? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by how am I doing it, but the, the, the result is that I am learning a lot of things that I'm glad to be learning now and correct them before I'm actually out on the road. So what you've done is you've set up a portion of your room as the van. Is that right? Exactly. Taken a bookcase and uh, a, a portable closet and made them be a wall for the, the enclosure of the uh, passenger side and uh, marked off the space exactly as they would be in the actual van, the size, and started building it inside. That's very cool. So you, you know, it comes as a, lot, a shock to a lot of people when they first uh, move into the van that how small it is and how little space there is. But you know, because you're living in that space right now. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't have a separated garage partitioned off. The reason why I don't have a closet is because to, to make it more roomy and more spacious. And it does feel plenty roomy enough for me in, at this point. I went through several versions first and one in which I couldn't even open my toolbox because the aisle was too small in the middle. But by spending uh, days in each way of designing it, I've come up with a design that it seems really roomy and it's perfect for me now. Yeah, that's a risk. I, I know people that do this. They, they build out their whole van and it's built in really elaborately and then they live in it and they find out, uh-oh, this doesn't really work for me. So yeah. you know now what does and does not work for you. Correct, and I needed to find that out. Right, I think in a, I think in a year or two, you'll really, it'll pay big dividends because you won't have to be, you won't be unhappy with your home, you'll needing to change it again. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, most of us do find that it changes over time, you know, it, uh, and, you, and like you said, you found that. You've had to change it since you've set it up as a, as a, in your bedroom. The first day you may think, well, this is a great design, but you try it two, three, four days and you start realizing, I don't really like this. And then you come up with something better. Right. And that's just true of all of us. Uh, it's still true. I mean, and, and then probably even a month or two or more, you'll be doing it again. Think, well, could this be better? And then you'll know. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, and so, folks, what we did, rather than uh, carry around the laptop, uh, Tommy's sitting in front of a laptop just like I am, mm -hmm. and that's kind of awkward. You phoned, you filmed it already with your phone. Is that right? Right. I filmed the video part with the phone, and then I uh, well, actually I did the audio first on a Walkman, and then I played the audio with my earphones while I went around with the phone to make the video match, and that worked out really well for me. Good job. That's, uh, that's the way the pros do it. They, they do the, the uh, audio and the video separately, so that was very good. That was, uh, so folks, uh, now what we'll do is we'll play the video that Tommy made, and you, he will give you a guided tour of his van in a bedroom, and I hope it gives you some great ideas uh, about how you can do the same thing for yourself. So let's take a look at the video. Well. I'm Tommy Paul, 72 years old, and now living in my bedroom van, assembled inside my apartment so that I can prepare for moving into a real and roadworthy van next spring. While waiting, I'm finding this bedroom van really helpful in three major ways. First of all, it's teaching me what I do and don't need, what I do and don't want, 
and what I can and cannot take with me when I actually start down the road. Secondly, I'm convinced the universe we live in is very alive, willing and able to give us what we need if we do our part first. That means that if we think someday I'll end up travel in a van, the universe may only give us back our someday concept without anything ever changing. So for real progress toward a van, we need to do all we can to bring it about with our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. If we do so without sabotaging our efforts out of fear or leaving important steps out due to not believing it will ever happen, then the universe will step in and supply the missing pieces we need in ways we never would have thought of. For me, the piece of the puzzle I couldn't fill on my own was how to come up with the money for a van. Living on $744 a month Social Security, I had no way to save any. But I went ahead with the bedroom van believing doing so would inspire the universe to provide the parts I couldn't. And that's exactly what happened. My handicapped roommate's personal assistant left. And instead of hiring another professional, she took me totally by surprise and asked if I'd like the job. Starting it pays $1,000 a month through her insurance, she said. And I only need to pass a simple test. Of course I said, yes, fantastic. With a little study, I passed the test, and now the money is going into a special savings account each month, preparing to purchase a real on-the-road van come spring. A third way the bedroom van is proving really helpful right now is with my emotions. Before beginning it, I felt like I was stuck in my situation without any way out. But as soon as I started getting serious, Right here in my bedroom, all that changed into feelings of exhilaration and a sense that I am truly moving forward, doing it already. And that's a really big improvement in the way I feel. The first thing you need to do in creating a bedroom van is to decide which van model you're going to want and look up the width and length of its cargo space. For me, that turned out to be 104 inches by 64 inches, which I marked off on the floor of my room with masking tape. I then enclosed that area with a tall bookcase and a cabinet moved right up against the masking tape line. Their backsides now form the passenger sidewall. The first thing you come to inside the van's back door and on the left is 20 gallons of fresh water in four stackable jugs. They fit the space well, but they don't fit pumps made for regular water bottles. The first pump I tried won't go down all the way. And the second pump simply doesn't fit the top. So I've ordered this tiny pump which drops down inside any jug and will run from my 12 volt system. I can use plastic tubing to bring the water up, across the ceiling, and down to my counter and sink on the other side. Next to the water jugs is my clothes washing machine first learned about from a Bob Wells video, but this model uses 100 watts less electricity than the others, protecting my batteries. To fill the washer quickly, I can tip a water jug to pour water into my bucket and then pour the bucket into the washer tub. The left side has a spinner to almost dry my clothes. I've learned to spin them the full five minutes, even though they feel just as dry at three minutes because after five minutes, they will hang dry in a couple of hours instead of overnight and into the next day. I found I can wash any amount of clothes in limited water by recycling the water. This means taking the water from the spinner cycle and dumping it back into the wash tub for the next batch of clothes. Instead of sitting on the floor, the washer sits on a platform above the wheel well making it faster and easier to drain its water into a bucket. Of course, I am washing clothes on the left at the same time I am spinning clothes on the right, with the next batch of clothes waiting in a bag, like an efficient assembly line. The one problem with this method is that having a lot of clothes to finish hang drying all at one time can be a problem. If it's raining or you need to be stealthy, hanging them inside the van everywhere just makes everything damp. To solve this, I just received a vacuum pump and chamber from Amazon. The idea is that since water boils at any temperature above freezing when in a vacuum, 
I can boil my clothes dry with no need for heat. The problem is that boiling water cools and will turn to ice. The ice will melt slowly because of no air around it to warm it. So I'm thinking I'll have to leave my clothes in the vacuum overnight. But I don't think they'll start to go stale because any germs will either be frozen or boil dry as soon as they thaw out. But keep in mind that drying this way is an experiment I'm doing. I don't know what the result will be yet. Next to the clothes washer are three plastic drawer cabinets from Walmart. I laid a piece of plywood across the center and attached it with four screws to the cabinet on either side. I took the wheels off the center cabinet to make it low enough not to touch the plywood. So now I can roll the plywood and outer cabinets to me while I sit on the bed, thus forming a desk. The center cabinet stays behind, leaving a deep well under this desk for my legs and feet. Beyond the desk is a wash tub right behind the driver's seat. Right now, that's just a wall. No need for a driver's seat in a bedroom van. And right behind the passenger seat is my bed. Sitting just outside the van is my used laundry bag, which will normally sit on the floor in front of the passenger seat. The bed is obviously blocking the side door of the van, so the bed is hinged to lift up out of the way, its legs folding back. Looking into the van through the side door, you can see the gel batteries under the bed. Their being on the passenger side helps balance the weight of the 20 gallons of water on the driver's side. I don't like having the electrical system right over the bed, but that's where it needs to be for both technical and practical reasons. Later, I plan to place a small curtain around it to create a more pleasing appearance. Above the electrical and bed is a fold-down that serves as my table or a workbench or kitchen counter where I can stand and work, held in place by hinges along the back and a chain on either side. That's where the wash tub goes, with water available through a hose from the pump on the other side. The first thing I purchased for the van was the 400 watts of solar power Bob Wells recommends. Originally, the four panels were set up in this window, but it only gets an hour of sunlight a day, plus the manager put mesh solar screens on all windows, blocking 75% of the remaining sunlight. The panels weren't happy. So for now, I'm using this small lead-acid battery charger, which if I wash clothes for two hours, takes about 48 hours to bring my four golf cart batteries back up to full charge. My chair for the van is an Alps Mountaineering legless chair. I place it on the bed facing my desk or facing the clothes washer, or I can turn it around and face out the side or back doors to enjoy a view. To be extra comfy, I can turn it into a lounge chair by adding a soft cushion to the bottom and a support-shaped cushion to the back. There are storage boxes under the bed that slide out, including a metal toolbox I bought because I knew my tools would be too heavy for plastic drawers. Now we are at the back of the van again, but on the passenger side. The box at the bottom represents the box that will hold a propane tank. For my safety, the box will be sealed except for holes on the bottom that open through the floor. These holes allow any leaking propane, which is heavier than air, to fall through the floor and exit the van safely. I will use propane only for a small one burner stove like Bob Wells has, used to heat the van and to heat water for showering. On top is a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat on it. For pooping, I use a biodegradable bag placed in a small trash can held on with a large rubber band. This trash can slips through the center of the seat to complete the toilet. After use, the bag is closed and placed in the other 5-gallon bucket which has a gamma seal lid to prevent any smells from escaping. When appropriate, I dig a hole in the ground to bury the bags with this post hole digger. The hole it digs is only 5 inches diameter, leaving little trace of the biodegradables buried perhaps 2 feet below. You may wonder why I don't partition off the garage area or have a clothes closet. And the answer is that I want to keep a wide open field to my living space, and adding things that require walls would limit that space too much. You also may have noticed there's no place reserved for an icebox or a refrigerator. 
I had thought I'd want one, but when I researched it, I realized they all stay energy hungry, whether it's for electricity, for propane, or for repeated trips to the store for ice. And in addition, I learned they are surprisingly fragile and easy to break. Propane refrigerators have to be made level every time you park to prevent sediment from building up and ruining them. And a low battery on an electric refrigerator can burn out the compressor when there's not enough power to keep the motor turning. In fact, I have a friend who burned out and had to replace his 12-volt refrigerator four times before discovering it was when his battery went low that it happened. So my alternative has been to live on healthy foods that require neither refrigeration nor cooking. Peanut butter, olive oil mayonnaise, mixed nuts, powdered eggs, powdered milk, vital reds, chlorella, and more. I also know to stay away from junk foods, since the challenges of van life require staying strong and healthy more so than living in sticks and bricks. Health being something junk foods just don't promote. There are a couple of items currently behind the van that belong inside. One is this set of six shallow drawers, which will be mounted on the wall above the jugs of water. The other is this placeholder-only bookcase. Its top three shelves are functioning as the one long shelf that, we be, that will be mounted high above the washer and desk. Its fourth shelf is functioning as the storage bin that would be mounted above the rear door, and the bottom portion represents the large bin that will be installed at the front above the driver and passenger seats. My four deep cycle gel batteries are used but still good, donated by a friend who replaces theirs every couple of years to always own the most fresh. I said earlier that the electrical boxes are right where they need to be, over the bed, but after a few nights of finding them an ongoing irritation, I discovered I could move them toward the back using the same wires stretched over the wheel well. Now they're in a perfect location where they've got lots of room of their own right behind the post hole digger. And since they're no longer threatening my pillow, I expect to sleep better too. My shower consists of two cloth shower curtain liners hung on a hula hoop from Walmart. These curtains are the cloth kind so that air can pass through them to dry. They will permanently hang against the ceiling in front of the clothes washer and be stretched toward the front of the van to dry and when not in use. I shower with preheated water from a two gallon pump up plastic bottle. The local hardware store set me up with a longer hose and outdoor sprinkler tip, but a sprinkler like those used at kitchen sinks might be better. When you first told me a few days ago that uh, I'm taking baby steps. I didn't say anything back. I just thought, baby steps, what are you talking about? This is huge. And then I thought, now if I was a baby and I was taking my first step, what would I be thinking? This is huge. <laughs> but I realized you're right. These are baby steps. Another concern I have is in the video, I talk about a little bit about as a start how the universe will fill in this, the pieces that you're missing. And I want to be sure that that's not misunderstood that as meaning that you can take off without planning, without money, in a van about to break down, and feel confident the universe will fill in the missing pieces. It doesn't work that way. You've got to do your part first. And that means considering exactly what you're going to want to do. And when you get it figured out, a good plan, test it first. It's kind of like stepping on a bridge very carefully with your foot to be sure it's strong enough before you put your full weight on it. That's important. When And when you have really truly prepared and done all you can, all you honestly can to get it right, that's when the universe will step in and take you by the hand and walk with you through your baby steps. Uh, and you don't have a van yet, but you were uh, taking steps to get the van. How were you doing that? Yeah, that was the, actually, I think, the result. I started the bedroom van. I'm thinking, well, I don't know where the money's going to come from. But if I'm taking my steps, surely it will. And then my housemate says that they've lost their attendant because they're handicapped and they have to have an attendant. And they asked me if I'd like the job. That was the amazing thing, and uh, so now there's a thousand dollars a month going into a savings account specifically for 
the van. And I'm very confident it's going to happen. I'm not thinking, well, I hope someday I'll have a van. I know I'm going to someday have a van and it's coming soon. And I'm really excited about it. And so glad that you, Bob, got me started on this path. You're the, you were the beginning. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. And so, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have mo the money and they don't know what they're going to do. And, you know, uh, if, you, if you're willing to work and, and get whatever job you're capable of, some people have limitations and can't just do anything, but chances are there's something you can do and you can work and save and get the van, just like has happened to you. A real pleasure getting to talk with you and it's it's so amazing to be live i've watched uh, a lot of your videos and wondered if i'd ever actually be in one and here i am in one there you are it's a it's a true thrill good i'm i'm delighted that it is for you thank you uh it's my pleasure too i mean you're and what most importantly is you're helping people i mean you're giving people a great example to follow that's why I went to the work to create the video. It's because I, I want others to follow this and have the same success I'm building for myself. Right. Very much. I agree so totally. So, folks, there you have it. Uh, Tommy has set a great example for us and for you that uh, wherever you are, whatever your situation, however hard it seems like you can't do this, maybe you can. And all you have to do is take the first step and then the second step, and then uh, lo and behold, it starts to happen. So thanks, Tom, so much for the example you've set, and I think you're gonna change people's lives. Thank you. You're so welcome. So folks, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you. <laughs>